Hello and welcome back. Effects are a very important feature of Symphony to create content. And this time we'll have a closer look at effects and the both types of effects which are built-in effects and user-defined effects and later then see how to create new effects from scratch from the so-called source effects. So first let's begin with the basic of effects. I will stop this and I will remove the both effects that are used here to work with a new factory defined effect. After you install Symphonite you will have the effects library with a lot of predefined effects and you can use these effects to build your own effects. For example, let's take the dancing squares and use them as effects. So I place them in the sequence and I set the sequence to loop. And this is the predefined effect which is now running. You can modify this effect in many, many ways and there are lots of properties of parameters where you can change the effect. For example, you can change the custom gradient and use different colors. So you can also modify parameters here. For example, we have a distance functions. There are many diff distance functions that if you change the distance functions, you see that also the effect changes. You could use different types of noise. You can use a different amplitude. I changed this parameter with the scroll wheel of the mouse and you see how the effect changes with changing parameters of the effect and you can also change the speed make it much faster or make it slower and in this way create your own effect modification so this is the effect i created now and it's just a modified factory effect that is now running. We'll speed up a little bit. Here the persistence is used at the time that the pixels are recreated and updated. So let's say this is now the effect and I like this effect. Everything's fine. I stop. So now this effect is a modified factory effect and I can now save this effect with this function create effect template. If I click this, I create a new user-defined effect. I call this Farpoint. So now I have this effect saved as a user-defined effect. So if I delete this effect here, I can again use it again. And this is now stored locally on your system. If you want to transfer later such a user-defined effect to another system, then just select the effect and you can now export this effect as a template. And I can save it, for example, as farpoint.slet, which is a Symphonite effect template. And this is my area in my Dropbox where I can save my shows, so I save it. I could now, from my file system on my desk, use this effect to transfer this to another system. You can also create completely new effects. This effects library has all the predefined or factory defined effects you can use, but sometimes it is necessary to create your own new effects. So I delete this effect here and to create new effects you have to use the area of source effects and in these source effects you have the building blocks to create new effects. Every effect consists of two components. One is the rendering effect which creates colors and the second one is the transform effect which modifies these colors in some way. If we take from our list of source effects, for example, the tangential color effect, 
This effect is a transform effect. If I select this in the layer, then you can see these teddy bears. And these teddy bears mean that the effect is either not complete or the rendering and the transform effect do not fit together. Here it is no problem. And if I se select the tangential effect, you see that for the effect, the tangential effect is missing its rendering effect. And I can now select a rendering effect and I select the color gradient. And now the effect becomes complete. If I play it, you see this new effect, which is a tangential effect with a changing color scheme behind. I can now modify this effect in some ways. For example, I can make it a little bit slower or I can change the custom gradient that is used for single colors, multi colors or different colors selected. So now I have created a new effect from the source effects and I can save this effect again and I call it multi-color tangential. So now this new created effect is available under user-defined effects in my effects library. I will now create a second effect, a new effect. I delete this one because I have it in my library. And this time from the source effects, we will use the layered 2D color effect. The layered 2D color effect is a very special function. If I place it in a layer here, this effect has two sublayers. In the first sublayer, I place an image from my media library. I take the Symphalite logo. The Symphalite logo is a PNG logo, so it is transparent in the background. In the second layer, in the second sublayer, I now place a circular color effect. You can see the teddy bears because this effect has a missing rendering effect. For rendering, I choose color gradient. And now what I get is the Symphalite logo merged together with the circles into a single output layer. Now I don't like the colors here, so I change the gradient to a gradient I have predefined before. I call it red purple. And this consists of red and purple circles. And now I have my Symphalite logo and in the background the circles from my custom gradient I created. And the two sublayers are now merged together into a single layer. I can see now that this is really a single layer, even it is composed from an image and an effect. And I can resize this composed layer like a single layer. And I can switch it back to the complete fixture and layout area. So this is the layered 2D color effect where I can mix two effects. I can even use videos, I can use images. And here in the second sub layer, I have here my, my color effect. I can mute this sublayers as I can do it for a main layer. And so these two are merged together into one layer. I can now again save this new effect. I call it red purple symphonite. And this now is also part of my user-defined effects in the effects library. The whole area of effects library, source effects and all the possibilities I have, I have these color effects. I again have these available as intensity effects for fixtures that only have an intensity channel is a great, a huge playground where I can select effects. Keep in mind that the effects are always composed 
from a transform effect and a rendering effect. And whenever placing a transform effect into a layer, you have to select for this new effect. In most cases, also a rendering effect. That's the story behind the whole thing. So it's just something you can play a lot with.